Hello, and welcome to the Social Psychic Radio Show, featuring Jason Zook. In uncertain times, we must change our focus and priorities. This show will highlight social justice issues with the goal of expanding minds and increasing unity, love, and mutual respect for ourselves and our planet. We support the Black Lives Matter movement. Our show aspires to promote social spirituality, which simply means that by coming together, we can solve any of our problems, including the goal of bringing an end to all forms of hate, discrimination, bias, or oppression. We must protect our environment, reform our criminal justice system, and protect every citizen from police brutality. When we come together, it becomes possible to bridge the gaps that plague our society and divide us from within. We the people means everyone. Hello and welcome to the Social Psychic Radio Show. This is Jason Zook. It's with great pleasure that I have special guests Omid Arsgari and Dr. Salama to the show today to discuss the importance of Tamarco's meditation principles. I want to just share some background. LinkedIn is a great app. It links us up around the world. And I got linked to Omid from LinkedIn directly. And one of the things that really impressed me was looking at his profile and then seeing what he's been doing ever since the pandemic has occurred. And there's some healing messages that I want to share with our audience because of the significance of the work that you've done, Omid. And I want to see if you could share that with our audience and kind of give them a little background of what you've been doing since the pandemic took hold in the UK. Absolutely. Hi, Jason. Thanks for having us on your show. I'm part of a music band. We're a Sufi music ensemble, actually, part of the MTO Shah Maqsudi School of Islamic Sufism. And our music band are based across Europe. So I'm based in London myself in the UK. And we have, I believe, around 20 uh, members within our band who, when we play a, a, a nice mixture of Western and Eastern music, so I myself play the santur, which is a, a traditional Persian instrument. And we have also all, all sorts of instruments you can think of in our, in our ensemble, including very, very strong musicians that are in, in, in orchestras across Paris and other parts of, of Europe. So we uh, traditionally, our music has always been a, a very nice and even mix of Eastern and Western vibes and sounds. And when the pandemic kicked off, we obviously could not practice in person. And we obviously spent the first few weeks just panicking like everyone else. And then we noticed that uh, Dr. Salome and the other instructors of Tamarkos, which is a Sufi art of concentration meditation, began to start these free sessions on Instagram and I believe Facebook and this, these, these sessions were going on through, obviously, our, our MTO Sufi school, our Tamarcos Association, for a few weeks. And we decided as musicians, we'd really like to contribute and add something to these because the whole purpose of these classes was to help our communities, help people that were really in panic mode, worried, anxious. And, and, our, and the only way we could really help was to really do what we do best as Sufis is to bring calm, bring peace and bring some, some sort of relief through the methods that we're familiar with. And our ensemble got together virtually, each in our own home, began to create and curate music that matches with those classes. And it took a good few weeks, but we got there eventually. And we ended up with an album full of 63 tracks very diverse range of music that hopefully fits different tastes and styles. And we were helped and assisted by the Tamarco's instructors in making sure, fine tuning them and making sure it fits. And it really does calm the hearts and minds of the listener. So that was our aim. And I think we got pretty close. What I'll say as an aside, I had the benefit of listening to your music when, you, when we first started talking it a couple uh, last month. And I have to tell you, when I listened to your, the sample you sent me, I was like, I have to have this on the show. I want our audience to hear this. I want this out there because of the special nature of what you've done with it. And just, it is very uplifting, vibrational, beautiful music, uh, in my opinion. I, I think it is. And I, I feel that 
sometimes music can heal the soul, they say. And I believe that you guys, <laughs> your music can truly heal the soul one, one, one note at a time. Dr. Solomon, I want to ask you, and, and just to introduce yourself to our audience, if you'd like, I'd like to, you're in Chicago, is that right? Correct. Right. Yeah. Um, Welcome my, to the show. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah, we're having a very gloomy Chicago day. Not at all. Uh, probably what you're going through over there. Um, we're in Florida. It's always sunny here, usually. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm a clinical psychologist here in Chicago, and I'm the current president of the Sufi Psychology Association. And then, as Omid mentioned, I'm also a um, Temaco's instructor. Um, so I, I use I do it here with oncology patients, with staff at the hospital, with nurses, but also part of the group that does it online as well. And I guess what I want to ask just as a, a layperson, when you coordinate the music to the to the Tamarcos, what does it take to al- align those? Yeah. You know, so prior to Zendadan on making the music, you know, we were, I mean, I'll speak for myself, I was just finding music, you know, you search for like spa music, meditation music, that is calming and and it's always been a aftermath, kind of like, it's like, it's an afterthought, I should say. It's just something I put on in the background. So it's not silent to do the practice. But this music, what was really interesting, at least for me, is that because they're both from this Sufi background, they're both part of the Sufi tradition, it fits. It was like music that perfectly fits. And there are times where you know, maybe we'll be doing a, a form of meditation. And Tamarco's actually has about five different components. And some of them are meditative movements. And there will be times where the music actually informs the movement of the, the meditation um, and vice versa. So it's really, it's like, it, it's just in harmony. It's, it's like a harmonious experience. It's not this thing in the background to soothe, but it's part of the experience has been my, I don't know if that makes sense. Makes sense. Absolutely. hundred percent. What's your favorite part of this project that you found working together and coordinating to create what you've done? For me, it's actually working together remotely. It's, it's been such an experience. Initially it was a big challenge for us as musicians because we, we were creating music from scratch. We weren't just, recording songs that we had you know we we really were at bouncing ideas through the web but through zoom through whatsapp you know anyway we could really send chords melodies beats ideas to each other so that whole collaboration it was so challenging but so fulfilling and 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 you know myself and Salome, we've both been members of of our sufi school for students of sufism for a very long time, but we never collaborated this closely. And we're across the pond and we, we, we're literally talking at least every week, right, Salome? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so that big, I think the community came together, the Sufi community came together with this aim to give back to society, with this aim to give back to our communities. And as a global community, we've never been this close, although we've never been so distant in, in, in physical terms. So that for me was, was the most special thing. Yeah, I, I agree with that. It's funny because we've, you know, I've heard about Omi. I've never actually worked with him. And now it's like, even though we're so far, we actually work together during this pandemic. But I think one of the the things I, I love the most about this entire experience is how much I've learned about myself through the process. So I don't know how much, Jason, you're aware of like what Sufism is or how it is, but it's a, it's a practice in self-knowledge. And so everything is teaching you about yourself. You're learning so much constantly. And even all of this work that we're doing, you know, yes, we're, we're doing it for, to give peace and comfort and relief, right, to, to, for everybody. But just the things I've learned about myself through the process, I don't think I ever even realized how selfish I was until now. And I'm, I was like, oh my gosh, you know, it's like, it's, 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 so it's not always great things you learn about yourself, <laughs> but um, it's really been an incredible time. And, and I've learned about music. I've learned how I, how I, I guess, like move to or respond to music. And it's, uh, it's been incredible. Excellent point you raise. And I'm just thinking about this. Just think in history, like in your field in, in, in psychology, how we're going to study the impact of the pandemic, not only individually, but across cultures, the globe, everything. And it's going to be something I think we have the ability now 
to really look at this from a re retrospective point of view and look inwards and say, you know, where were you during this period? Well, I was finding myself creating amazing music to help heal the hearts and minds of our planet is what one of the things you guys could say. I could say I meditated and found myself in other ways, <laughs> but it, it's really thinking about it. And, and what you're trying to do is hundred percent. What I find in terms of everything I do is healing modalities. I like to show here healing modalities, share them. And so while you're talking about Sufi Sufism, I, I think it's amazing to hear about the, the meditation aspects of it, but also the message to it the creating the harmony and having self-guidance and, and directing yourself. I think that's beautiful. That's for self-growth and, and betterment. And that's important and imperative for us to really be exposed to and understand. How many of these have you done in terms of, of creating music and, and, and different types of, you know, songs and those kind of things? So we traditionally, this is ended on ensemble. We, we started back in 2010 officially in creating music, the whole purpose of our ensemble initially was, you know, in Sufism, you have something called Sufi Zekr, which is Sufi chanting. So you have, you, we go to our Sufi school and we have the sermons where we learn more about Sufism. We learn more about how to learn, really. I think that's, that's the best way to express it. We learn more how to, about how to be, not to follow, but to, to discover within us whatever that is within us, that existence has given us. And as part of that, and towards the end of the sermon, usually we have Sufi chanting. And Sufi chanting consists of Sufi poetry sung beautifully in sort of Persian modes. Uh, the ancient so Sufism has a, a very long history in Persia and, and the Middle East and, and uh, the different languages and the different poetry that, 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 that has reached us through, through the centuries, this, you know, 14,000 year old heritage. And this poetry, the message of every single verse is, is about you. It's about what's within you. It's about the love that's that you have and the love that surrounds you. So it's all about love. So that, that chanting, that chorus, that motion that goes with it, because you move from left to right when you are doing the Sufi Zek, the Sufi chanting. For me, that's been the, a very powerful experience. And I think a lot of the musicians, we get our inspiration from that. So our initial aim was to take that, which is a very practical practice in Sufism and be able to share it with an audience who have maybe not even heard about Sufism before, but for them to experience what we experience within that environment. So it's really tough. You know, you, you're, you're talking about an experience that's sort of indescribable. So how do you talk about that feeling or that state of presence or that state of just feeling the whole existence within you, the whole entire universe in harmony with your soul. And that feeling, you can't describe it through words. So that's why we try to describe it through other forms of art, through motion, through music, through poetry. So that was the, always our aim. Now for this particular project, we had the same aim, but we really didn't want people to listen to this and say, this is Eastern music, this is ancient Persian music, or this is Sufi music, in fact. We, we try to bring those elements, but then bring other elements, which is orchestral music, which is, and when you listen to the album as a whole, you, you hear so much different variety and you hear, you know, beats from Africa, you hear harmonies from uh, Western orchestra, you hear the, the, Indian flutes and Indian vibes and Indian sounds and you hear the Spanish acoustic guitar and it's so borderless and that was the pure aim of this album was to make it accessible and make it resonate with as wide as an audience as possible because the aim wasn't to say hey this is Sufism the aim was to say hey we have these sounds, we have these harmonies, we have these melodies, but we want to present it the way you would experience it and you would enjoy it as a Western listener, as an Indian listener, as a Persian listener, regardless of your, of your background. Because people 
enjoy listening to things that are familiar to them, right? You enjoy the sounds that you grew up with. You know, you might enjoy rock music and that might calm you. So the album in its entirety is so diverse. And that was the aim. It was really for everyone to get something from it. And I, I hope and I think we achieved that because the feedback we've had from listeners has been incredible. Well, I will say that that's what sold me. I just heard that one little clip you said. I was like, oh, wow, this is, this is, words don't describe it. Like you said, you can't encapsulate it with words. You only have to experience it in order to understand it and the healing nature of it. Amazing. If you guys were to see where it's been that you've been headed with this project, where do you see it going next? After the pandemic winds down and, and things open up again, and we're never going to have exact normal obviously our normalcy is going to be in some other area but where do you see the future of this from a musical perspective of our ensemble has really learned a lot about truly world music because we've had to really bring in sounds that are borderless so i think our music will continue in that sense that we, we, we will try and make it borderless we won't try to keep it too traditional and we'll try to make it a little bit more accessible to a wider audience from a music perspective. Definitely. Dr. Solomon, what, what is your favorite part of this project that you feel working on the inside of it that someone on the outside may not see so easily that you've witnessed and experienced for yourself? About working with Zendida or the Tamarco's yeah. just in general? Incorporating Tamarco's and working with Zendida. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, I'll, I'll tell you a story that I think is really lovely that I didn't, I was doing a Tamarco's class for oncology here at the hospital. Typically, it's like patients who just had um, a treatment will come down for it or staff will come in. And it's, uh, it's about 45 minutes of this practice. And, you know, afterwards, they fill out a form that tells me kind of how their experience was, you know, how they're, how they're feeling in comparison to before. So I, I have a lot of things to kind of compare it to. But one day, this is one of my favorite stories. So it was this incredible, you know, this, the classes, it, it can be really powerful. And you know, the class ended and everybody left and I was cleaning up, just clearing out the room and cleaning it up. This woman came back. She was an elderly lady. She came back about like 10 minutes later and she said, I forgot my cane. So the, and this is something that they have consistently been reporting is that their, their pain has decreased from this. And so she came back and she said, I forgot my cane. And it just, it was so surprising to me that somebody will just get up and leave or there have been practices and, you know, and we say, this is a, this is, you know, this is a Sufi practice. This is a Sufi practice of concentration and meditation. Sufi music is, is forming it and part of it. And I will have people in the classes talk about how one woman said, I felt, I felt like Christ was hugging me during the practice, which was really beautiful. Another one, you know, it's like, it's such a unique experience. It just, because, I mean, I, I think, again, I am biased, but I think because it's been, it's so, it's about each person tapping into that source of strength within them, which is, you know, one with all there is and kind of tapping into that, that people have so many different experiences or different ways or words that they use to ex express it, even though it's all the same kind of thing that's happening with everybody. So I think if anything, one of the surprising things that's come out of this is to show is to show me the the unity and the the oneness and how you know we try so hard to take these more subtle delicate experiences and and like press them into language so we can communicate sometimes by doing so we end up creating more distance and separations but when i was looking at the overall experience it's, it was amazing to see how everyone's having this like like a deeper experience and they're they're using whatever words they can but it's the same experience I, what's interesting while we're talking about this today, I'm thinking about like a favorite song from when I was 10 years old and all the memories attached to that song. So when I hear it on the radio, it reminds me of a period of my life. And I do believe we anchor our memories and our, you know, our, our favorite parts of our, our, who we are, our memories, our existence to songs and time frames. And so to actually think when you're blending uh, world music is basically what you're doing. You're combining different beats from all different areas of the world to combine it into a, into a ballad. I think that's amazing because you're taking something that's, we're very segmented as a planet. And if you take different parts of that and 
create, it's almost like you're creating something that's homogenous for everybody to, to kind of be an example of what a blended culture or society would be like if we were to blend all our cultures and have a melting pot of music sounds like what you're trying to do with this stuff kind of blends a lot of those you know you take the it, it's interesting to me it's like creating a fabric and a, and a patch meal kind of thing of of, of, of tones and and chanting and music i just think that's the best way would you what would be your best way of describing it other than like you said earlier a medley of various different aspects from different cultures that you you've, you've gotten the best of each kind of peppered together I, I would say, take away our thoughts, take away our cultures, take away our ideas, take away everything that we preconceive. At the end of the day, we're, this, we're, we're one and the same. And I truly believe that. So I think what music does, it, it bypasses that filter. And it, what it, that's what it does for me anyway. When I listen to music, there's, there's nothing else there in terms of, especially if that music really talks to me, really resonates with me. I f sometimes forget who I am and I just drown in the music. And I think that's the reality that we have. These waves, these vibrations bypass those filters. And that's my personal experience. But Salomon, I'm not sure if you have a different perspective to it. No, I agree. I'm thinking of, you know, when we talk about in Sufi psychology, we talk about nonlinear treatments, right? So music is one of those. It's a way that you're absolutely right. It bypasses all of these words and narratives and everything. And it just taps into a more, it's an experiential way. It's also why it works with a lot of people. But to your point, Jason, with the memory, it's also why you know music is really great for people with dementia or Alzheimer's, because although there's all this plaque that's developed in the brain and they can't access some of the newer things that they have in their mind. It taps into those old memories, these old practices. And actually right now we are beginning to use Zendadelon with some dementia um, patients to kind of them as well. Tell us a little about the piece that we're gonna share for the show. You're gonna get us that to do, obviously we'll share that with the audience shortly, but can you tell us a little about the specific piece that you're, you're gonna share with us so that our audience knows a little about it? Two, two different songs I think we're thinking about sharing. One is called Hope. Hope is what we set out to give everyone, <laughs> to what we set out to give ourselves, first of all, at those early stages of the pandemic. So that was one of the early songs that we, we worked on. It has energy. It, it has a, a guitar chord progression as a bass. And then what you hear is, is a few Persian instruments sort of, Come in, at, get, come in and out at different times. And the, the beat of it is also a very distinct beat that's a mixture of, I'd, I'd call it maybe an African beat, but then you have the Persian drum, which is a daf, which is a big, huge uh, frame drum that gives it a little bit of energy. The, the thing with this song is it's, it's very upbeat, but it's very soothing. It's, it's very, very fast. There's a lot going on, but at the same time, it calms you because we really worked on balancing all these instruments to, to give it that, that uplifting effect, but without you losing your focus because the whole point of this was to stay concentrated, stay focused, stay centered. And there's another piece called Wisdom, which is you, you actually hear the wisdom in there because it, it, there is a very a distinct Persian mode, Persian musical mode, which we call Daska. And the name of this mode is Nava. And when you listen to this, it, it just talks to you and it, it talks to your soul. And, you know, one thing I would say about our music and, and the mix between the East and the West is that the, the Eastern music or the, particularly the, the Persian modes that we use in the music they're very linear. So, this is, so when you listen to Eastern music, you listen to a melody. And the melody sometimes is, has a, quite a spiritual vibe to it. And you feel like it's, it's, it, it just reminds you of spirituality. It reminds you of wisdom, of really deep wisdom. And then when you mix that with Western music, the thing that Western music has is it's not a linear melody. It's a harmonic sequence of so many different melodies and harmonies. And it's like placing 
the way I describe it anyway, I'm not sure if it's the correct terminology. It's like placing an amazing melody with an amazing harmonic st structure. And then just the two, they, they, the, these two sort of, tunes from the east and the west they speak to your soul and they speak to your nature they speak to both aspects of your human of the human being so these two songs we hope you enjoy they are quite different one is hope is is quite upbeat but also it gives hope hopefully <laughs> and the other one wisdom you you hear the wisdom and it's very very calming well, I believe that those are two of the most important things we need <laughs> at the moment is hope, Absolutely. right? We need hope and wisdom. So those are, those are very valid and, and very appreciated. Dr. Sola, Soma, what do you think when you hear these ballads in terms of your own personal, I know you've been involved in the production of it, but listening to it yourself, when you, when you heard it for the first time, what did you think when it was done? Were you? Well, and so I wasn't involved with the actual production. It was, they, they did it all. I was a little, so I get ner nervous. I, I am Persian, but I don't like Persian music. Like I've never liked Persian music. So, and I tell Omid this all the time because I was like, oh God, like, and it, it, like when people ask me to listen to Persian music, when my father would, it's always really long. It takes forever. Like I've always really like dread it. This, this is something else. Like it doesn't have that same, the things I dreaded about it. It, it, I, I feel I feel it does what it says, which was really beautiful. This was this was what was so surprising to me is I think um, it gave me and I told Omid, I was like, I don't like Persian music, but this is I love this. What is this? And he was explaining to me, well, there's there's a lot of different things in this that you're hearing. It's not just and then for whatever reason, I for whatever reason, I never really liked the the way Persian music was before the way these are kind of working together. There'll be times where I'll listen to it and I will feel my heartbeat sync up with, with the, with the music, you know, and I feel it like within me and I feel it inside of me. So I, for me, it was, it's, it gave me a new appreciation for, for music. I will say that for sure. Absolutely. What do you think looking back on the stuff that you've done in the last year has been the most, was the most challenging aspect of, of your work that you are happy it's figured out, but there were some complications or some wrinkles. You know, for, for me, I would say the, the one of the biggest challenges was kind of getting out over my, my own stuff, right? Because I'm also going through the pandemic with everybody, right? I'm also isolated. So trying to navigate my own, you know, if, if you leave me to myself, I will just indulge in my feelings and sink into it and like feel bad for myself or whatever. So I think that was one of the things is that there was this, this passion project that was very much in front of us to do. And in order to truly engage in it and in order to truly um, roll up your sleeves and get in there, you have to let go of yourself a little bit. You have to let go of all of this that, you know, you want to sit, you want to kind of indulge in these feelings or whatever you're going through and you have to put that aside. So I think for me, it was those moments when I would sink back into, you know, it's kind of like this. I don't know if this is a good example, but it's kind of like, let's say you're like digging and your head is down and you're like in it, you're doing what you need to do. And then you, you look up all of a sudden and you notice what has happened and you get overwhelmed and you, you know, and then you're like, oh my God, you know, you lose yourself for a moment. I think those were the challenging moments where when I kind of like stood back and was like, what am I doing? Oh my God. But, but it's a pandemic and all the narratives that go in my head of this is how you should feel. And, oh, you know, it, so, it was so discombobulating for me, it just on every level you could think of that we're challenged. It challenged us on every single level right. that you can imagine. Right. I mean, this was an incredible time in history. This really was remarkable in all of our lives. But Omid, what was it, what about for you? Would you say that there was a, what was the most challenging part? You know, when the pandemic kicked in, I was maybe worse than any, anyone else I knew in terms of panicking, in terms of worrying, in terms of stress. And the only way I could really survive it in those few first months was to go back to what I'd learned, which was to center yourself, which was to, to breathe. <laughs> You know, people take breathing so lightly, but it's, it's so important to just breathe, just be, just, just relax and just let go. You know, there's a, there's a, there's a saying that says, you know, the, the worst thing could happen. And when it does happen, you, you cry about it. 
right? But you shouldn't keep yourself so engaged about what if this happens? What if this happens? When it happens, you deal with it, you know? And for me, uh, the challenge was just to pick myself up. And this project, I, I would say, helped me more than anyone else who is listening to the music. Because for me, it gave me a purpose. We were in lockdown. I was, lo I was losing my mind because I'm quite, a, quite an active person. You know, I, I, I couldn't go to the gym. I couldn't work. You know, my business was shut down and, and there was literally nothing else to do, especially for that first lockdown in the UK. So this project really brought me back from a very dark place. And from then onwards, I was so engaged in this project that I think I missed part of the pandemic, to be honest. I think I, 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 I you know, a few months went by and I looked back and I said, oh, geez, this is still happening. But I've been so, it's been such a positive experience that I, I would say it, 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 it sort of shielded me from, from that purely because that, that whole collaboration that we did, and it was a global collaboration. And Jason, as, as, as part of the, the Sufi uh, response to the pandemic, the entire global Sufi community, we started creating PPE for uh, hospitals, for nurses. So we were going home, making music and going out, delivering m masks and face shields and everything. So we were really meeting the, the worst hit in the pandemic and you know on international nurses day for example last year in may we went and we we spoke to nurses at a hospital in in, in oxford who were dealing with the pandemic and we couldn't really go inside they came out to us and and we were talking to them and that interaction for me was so deep and so it was it was a it gave me so much inspiration for the music. And one of the, you know, we got 63 tracks in the, in the music and one of the CDs, six CDs in there, one of them is dedicated to nurses and doctors and front, frontline heroes. It's purely because of that interaction, we had so much inspiration in terms of what we could do to help them, what we could do to calm them down. And the CD4 in our album, and that is is has been purely dedicated to healthcare heroes. So the challenge was me and the solution was just like Solomon said, is just step away from, from yourself and just do something, just be part of the solution rather than sit down and, you, and, and drown in your sorrows. That's a good point. And finding your purpose is the biggest challenge most of us had, I think, especially with those, I just, to me, they're all blurred months. I don't remember. I'm like, wait, are we, I was thinking, is it November 2019 or was it November 2020? I, I really weird moments. I know we're going to have a lot of that going back to our lives going forward. And, and, it, and it's amazing that you had a chance to take something from despair and create opportunity and healing from it and hope and wisdom, for example. I think anything you can do, steps you can take to make and improve a situation makes it so much better. And also, I think it's encouraging for members of our audience, because I'm sure a lot of them are still overwhelmed. They may have lost a job, a family member, have gone through some personal stresses, whatever that is. And for us to be able to share your, your message with them, I think it's going to be powerful. I want to ask you this, because we're, we're running low on time, because we're going to share this segment too, but I want to ask you this. You want to have our audience reach out to either of you, where would they be able to find you or what would be the a website, email address or anything like that if they wanted to reach out and, and, you know, get in touch with you directly. I always want to make sure you have that opportunity at our show to do that. So. Thank you. Uh, I'll start with the, the music ensemble is we call Zende Delan, which literally translates to the Awakened Hearts. And our web address is Zende Z or Z as you know it, uh, Z E N D E H D E L A N, and it's dot org or dot com. Either would work. And we are all the organizations under MTO are part of the MTO Shah Maksudi School of Islamic Sufism, and the website for that is purely mto.org. And Solomon, maybe you could talk about Sufi psychology and Tamar, of course. Tamarquiz is the method of concentration and meditation that we've been talking about. It's actually known as the art of self-knowledge through concentration and meditation, because it's all about exploring while you're, while you're doing it, not just quieting your mind. And you can learn more. We actually have, we have an app out that we just, we put out recently 
And we do the free classes on our Instagram, which is at Tamarco's app, T-A-M-A-R-K-O-Z app. And we've got these Tamarco's, they're daily 30 minute Tamarco sessions on Instagram and on Facebook, and they are in 10 different languages. So people can of all different walks of life, wherever they are, they can get some relief. We also just created um, for free a vaccine relief section for the app where, because some people are having a really horrible reaction after the vaccine and, you know, you just have to wait it out. So instead of letting their mind get the best of them, they can listen to some visualizations and kind of get out of that place a little for a little bit. So that's also on the app as well as on Instagram and Facebook. And then Sufi Psychology Association, you know, during this pandemic, we created an initiative called Caring for Our Caregivers, where we have been donating stress relieving programs for healthcare workers that involve Tamarco's to Right now we're in four countries, 50 states, over 300 hospitals, um, all in the last, it has been less than a year we've been doing this. So you can learn more about Sufi psychology and all of that at sufipsychology.org. That's great. I always finish my show by asking, uh, I'll go first. If you were a spirit animal, which spirit animal would you be and why? And I always say owl because I have two parrots and I believe that kind of things from a 180 perspective from above and wisdom. And so... I like to always say that, but I was going to see if, if either you had an interest in expressing which spirit animal you'd be and why. I, I don't think mine is very exciting. I'm going to say I would be a dog. I think just because I have a dog and he seems yeah. to live the best life ever. And <laughs> he is, I've learned, I'll tell you, I've learned a lot about loyalty. I've learned a lot about just like, uh, so one love, I guess, from him. So his name is Misto. And I remember once, I don't know, he did something and I got mad at him and, you know, I gave him a timeout and I like left and I came back in the room and he was like happy to see me, like as if nothing had happened. And I had this moment where I like looked at him and I said, oh my gosh, like me, when somebody like is upset with me, I like go and I like, again, sulk and indulge in my feelings. And I like sit in a corner for like years or whatever and he is just, he is who he is. He loves me regardless if I'm yelling at him or not. And so it was a really good, he's taught me a lot. So for that reason, I guess he'd be my spirit animal. Dog would be my spirit animal. I Only you're up. I have no idea. I've never thought about this. <laughs> I, I would say my, my son calls me triceratops and he, 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 he makes me uh, walk around the house with him on, the, on, him on my back. Uh, yeah. And he loves dinosaurs. <laughs> I'm going to say triceratops just because that's what he calls me. Excellent. He's two years old. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. I want to thank you guys for sharing this with us because this is like such a, a pivotal thing. I think it's be so important to share track that we have hope and wisdom and we're going to do that next i definitely want you to keep me informed going forward if there's anything else my platform can do to showcase any new music you come up with or any other collaborations because i think this type of stuff is just such a special thing to share and so unique and that's what i look for for my show so when you have other collaborations in the future beyond this project i would love to be consulted and, and would love to showcase you guys because one of the things i like to do for the show is mind body spirit, spirit wellness and holistic healing and, and any kind of healing modalities we can come up with. And music is a major component of that. And your message fits squarely within what I like to share in terms of programming. So I'd love to have you guys back on in the future again, too, if that interests you and in, down Absolutely. the road. Absolutely. We, we were talking about this uh, a few days ago, my, myself and Salome, because we I, I'd, I've been following your show, obviously, since we started speaking. And I think what you do is you, you cover so many different things and they're all so positive. Like even, even, even things that you post uh, on your uh, social media, just the positive messages that you, you, you post, they're not, you know, it just, I think it speaks to a wide audience and, and, you know, from our perspective, we like to speak to a wide audience and we like to present ourselves. We know we don't, we, Sufism is a practice within Islam and we are Muslims, but you don't have to be a Muslim to experience the, the teachings of Sufism. So that's why we have people from a, a Jewish background, Christian background, all within our school. And for us, breaking down those boundaries is more important than saying, hey, this is who we are. I so we it. appreciate your platform as well. Thank you. I love you just exactly said something that resonates so well with me is breaking down boundaries and uniting all of us and loving each other unconditionally and respecting one another. Those are all things I think going forward 
as we move from where we are today going forward, it's it's pivotal. And I thank you so much for the warm words. That made me feel really good today. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I just want to thank you guys so much for coming on the show today and for sharing this information. And I look forward to having our audience hear these clips. And we're going to have that now at this part of the segment. And before we wrap up, thank you both for coming on today. It's, it's amazing to have you on. And, and I, I just look forward to seeing this episode go out with the music and everything else. And the audience is about to hear that now, but I'm excited. So thank you so much, guys. Thank you. For thank you. Close your eyes and take your focus within as you enjoy these soothing melodies. body relaxing your eyes and become aware of your breath. Notice how you're breathing. Begin breathing deeply through your nose. Slowly inhaling and breathing out of your mouth, drawing out your exhalation and 
gradually deepening your breath. Let each breath become fuller, slower, but still comfortable. Take deep breaths without tensing or straining. Let your breath be your point of focus. Gently empty your lungs with each exhalation to make room for more fresh air to enter your system. Feel your mind becoming quieter. Feel your body relaxing. Enjoy the silence, calm and stillness within. Thank you for listening to this episode of the social psychic radio show don't forget to join us for another episode next time if you enjoyed the show we'd love for you to subscribe rate and give us a review on itunes you can also check us out on facebook and don't forget to visit the social psychic youtube channel until next time it's a big world out there keep an open mind embrace your paradigms and know that the universe is always yours to explore